Hello, and welcome to the People's Mental Stimulus Update. In today's topic, we're going to be talking about Democrats. Because I've hit the Republicans pretty hard twice so far, and I didn't make them look too good. So let's see what we have to find out about the Democrats today. Democrats, well, we found that the Democratic Party has changed significantly during its more than two centuries of existence. During the 19th century, the party supported a, a, or tolerated slavery, and it opposed civil rights reforms after the Civil War. In order to remain, uh, to retain support of the Southern voters, by the mid 20th century, it had to undergo a dramatic ideological realignment and re it reinvent itself as a party. Supporting organized, supporting organized labor the civil rights of minorities and protective reforms since President Franklin D. Roosevelt, basically his New Deal of the 1930s, the party was also tended to favor greater government intervention and economy and to oppose government intervention in the private non-economic affairs of citizens. The logo of the Democratic Party the donkey was popularized by the cartoonist Thomas Nast in the 1870s. Though widely used, it has never been officially adopted by the party. Isn't that funny? They didn't adopt the donkey as a party, but yet they still use it. <laughs> the Democratic Party is the oldest political party in the United States and among the oldest political parties in the world. It traces its roots to 1920, sorry, to 1792 when the followers of Thomas Jefferson adopted the name Republican uh, to emphasize their anti-monarch uh, views. The Republican Party, also known as the Jefferson Republicans, advocated the um, government with limited powers, another faction to emerge in the early years of the Republicans. The Federalist Party, led by Alexander Hamilton, favored a strong central government Jefferson's faction developed from a group of anti-federalists who had aligned its favor of the additional the Bill of Rights. So basically, they, had, they added stuff to the Bill of Rights and to the Constitution of the United States. The Federalists called Jefferson's faction the Democratic-Republican Party in the attempt to identify it with disorder and spawned by the Radical Democrats of the French Revolution of 1789. After the Federalist John Adams was elected to a presidency in, 19, in 1796, the Republican Party served as the country's first opposition party, and the 1798 of the Republican adopted the uh, preserved Democratic Republican Party label as their official name. So basically, as you can see, I mean, it started out as Democrats and went to a Democratic Republican Party in 1796 when John Adams was elected, and in the 19 in the 1800s, Adams was defeated by Jefferson, whose victory un ushered in a period of prolonged Democratic Republican dominance. Jefferson won the election. Easy in 1804, the Democratic Republicans James Madison, 1808 to 1812, and James Moore, 1816 to 1820, were also subsequently elected by 1820 the Federalist Party and had faded from national politics, leaving the Democratic Party, the Democratic Republican Party, as a country's sole majority party and allowing Monroe to run unopposed in this year in that year it's presidential election so as you can see i mean they didn't they didn't really seem to actually put in a presidential nominee they just let um and row run unopposed for that year which means we had a one-sided president we didn't have one we didn't have a democratic or republican or independent or what was the other one that was the other one a federalist <laughs> which is probably good thing we have a federalist but as you see i mean They've been doing a lot of changing. During the 1820s, new states 
entered the Union, voting laws were relaxed and several states passed legislation that provided for the direct election of presidential electors by voters. Electors and previously been appointed by the state's legislator. So basically the people actually used to put the people in the presidency, the electors, before this was put in there by the legislators, the um, basic Congress doing um, their stuff. And nowadays, like I said, the voting rights have been relaxed, and that's how we can do voting now. These changes split the Democratic Republicans into factions, each of which dom sorry, not dominated, nominated its own candidate in the presidential elections of 1824. The party's Congressional Caucus nominated William H. Crawford of Georgia, but Andrew Jackson and John Quincy Adams the leaders of the party's two first largest factions also sought the presidency. Henry Clay, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, was nominated by Kentucky and Tennessee's legislators. Jackson won the most popular and electoral votes, but no candidate received the necessary majority in the Electoral College. When the election went to the House, the representatives basically Clay, and who had finished fourth and was thus eliminated from, <laughs> was he was eliminated, wow, nice, eliminated from consideration through his support to Adams, who won the House vote and subsequently appointed Clay Secretary of State. So as you can see, um, Adams, Adams like Clay, I mean, I guess that's why it's called, um, what was it, Adams, I think it was Adam and Clay's Republicans or Democrats, I'm not sure exactly which one was in my other episodes, I have to rewatch it and remember, sorry about that. Despite Adams' victory, differences between Adams and the Jackson factions persisted. Adams supporters, representing Eastern interests, called themselves National Republicans. Jackson's whole strength lay in the South and West, referring to his followers simply as Democrats, or Jackson's Democrat, Jacksonian Democrats. Jackson defeated Adams in 1828's presidential election and 1832 in the Baltimore, Maryland, at one of the country's first national political conventions. The first convention had been held the previous year by the anti-Masonic movement. The Democrats nominated Jackson for president drafted a party platform and established a rule that required party presidential and vice presidential, nom vice presidential nominees to receive votes at at least two thirds of a national convention's delegates. This rule, which has not repealed since 1936, effectively seceded veto power in the selection process to minority factions, and it often required Conventions to hold dozens of ballots to determine the presidential nominee. So basically, as you can see, it's still about doing the same thing as it was. I mean, we still have to have the presidential elections to the a nominee, get the most popular vote, electoral college. Although, as far as electoral college goes, I think we should do it without it because it's just a waste. Because it should be decided by the people, not by a person sitting around saying, "Ah, oh, well, he got." This many votes, and this guy got that many votes, but we're gonna go for the other guy instead of this guy because he, even though he clearly won, you know. But um, let's see here. The presidential in 1924, John W. Davis needed more than 100 ballots to secure his nomination. Jackson easily won re-election in 1832, but his various opponents, who diversely referred to him as King Andrew. <laughs> joined with the former National Republicans to form the Whig Party, named for the English political faction that had opposed absolute monarchy in the, 1700, the 17th century. From 1828 to 1856, the Democrats won all but two presidential elections, in 1840 and 1848. During the 1840s and 1850s, however, however the Democrats, the Democratic Party, should I say, and is officially named itself in 1848 suffered serious international strains, internal strains, sorry, over the issues of 
extending slavery to the Western territories, Southern, De Southern Democrats led by Jefferson Davis wanted to allow slavery in all the territories well. The Northern Democrats led by Stephen A. Douglas proposed that each territory should be decide the question for itself through their referendum. The issue split the Democrats at their 1860s presidential convention where Southern Democrats nominated John C. Wow. Breaking, Breaking Ridge, I think it is, and, and Northern Democrats nominated Douglas. 1860 election also included Je John Bell, the nominee of the uh, Constitutional Union Party, and Abraham Lincoln, the candidate of the newly established 1854 Anti-Slavery Republican Party, which was related to Jefferson's Republican Party of the decade earlier. With the Democrats hopefully split, Lincoln was elected president with only about 40% of a national vote. Wow, that's not good. He only had 40% of a national vote and he still won. In contrast, Douglas and Breckinridge won 29% and 18% of the vote, respectively. The election of the 1860s is regarded by most political observers as the first of the country's three critical elections. Contestants that produced sharp yet enduring changes in the party's loyalty across the country. Some scholars also identify the 1824 elections as a critical election. It was established the dominant, the uh, dom sorry, the Democratic and Republican parties as the major. So basically, by 1824, was it? Yeah, 1824s when. The Democratic and Republican parties were coming around. Parties in what was obviously a two-party system, the federal elections from the 1870s and the 1890s, the parties were in a rough balance, except in the South where the Democrats dominated because most whites blamed the Republican Party for both the American Civil War and from 1861 to 1865. And the Reconstruction, I don't have to look that one up because I don't know what they're talking about as far as Reconstruction goes, but that was from 1865 to 1877 that followed. The two parties controlled Congress for almost equal periods through the rest of the um, 19th century, though the Democratic Party held the presidency only during the two terms of Grover Cleveland, which is 1885 to 1889, and 1893 to 1897. Representatives legislation and physical intimidation designed to prevent newly enfranchised American African Americans from voting. So basically basically tried to um, stop the African Americans from voting. See how, how far that got them, right? Because now they're able to vote and put a good president in office and I'm glad they can. Despite passage of the 15th Amendment, ensuring that the South would remain structurally democratic for nearly a century, during Cleveland's second term, however, the United States sank into an economic depression. The party at this time was basically conservative and arranged oriented opposing the interests of big business, especially uh, protective tariffs. A very expensive tariff was it is a tax that's placed on importing and exporting goods. It's a way to make revenues for the government as well as make a lot of revenues for like super countries. I don't know if there's any more out there, but I'm sure if there is, there's probably no. <laughs> and favoring cheap money policies, which were aimed at maintaining low interest rates. And as you know, as I started out with how the Democratic Party has made a basically changed significantly significantly during more than a century of existence because remember when I've read in here it said that it's um, the Democratic Party did actually want slavery and as you know nowadays they don't want that they want equality they want they're like hey you know what we fucked up back in the past we realized that slavery was not the way to go so you know what we're gonna make we're gonna try to make it better by making it so all people can vote and give them equal, give them all voice. 
And if they don't want their voice, then they don't have to vote. Whereas Republicans, as you see nowadays, Republicans nowadays are passing anti-voting laws, trying to make it so minorities and people of color are having a harder time to vote if they can vote at all, and making it a misdemeanor or a felony to pay on the state if you give anyone in a voting line something to drink or something to eat, even though that is straight bull crap. But as for, as for now, I mean, I actually gave you a slight Democratic overview. And hopefully that was inf enough information for you. If not, please let me know in my comments, and I will, I will try to find more information to keep you enlightened. Enlightened, sorry. But until next time, you guys have a wonderful evening. I'll broadcast again to you either tomorrow or Saturday, depending on when more information comes available. So until then, you guys have a wonderful night. Bye. Yeah. I got this feeling inside my bones. You win the club, just to party I'm there, I get paid a fee It's Friday night and I won't be long Till I hit the guns fly, hit the guns fly I'm in